it, it is quite bizarre what's going on. Talking of free speech, let's talk about Twitter, uh, because Twitter at, on Friday was bought up finally uh, by billionaire Elon Musk. He says there'll be no changes, though, to Twitter's content moderation policies for now after spending $44 billion. He says, just to be super clear, we have not yet made any changes to Twitter's content moderation policies. Big issue, so over whether people, including Donald Trump, should uh, have their accounts uh, basically put back in place. So many people banned for breaking Twitter's bizarrely woke rules on what you can and can't say, even when people were stating scientifically proven facts about COVID. Let's talk about this with Pr Professor Frank Faradi. He's a professor of sociology and a staunch free speech activist. Good morning to you, Frank. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, overall, good thing or a bad thing uh, that uh, Elon Musk is the new owner of Twitter? I think uh, on balance, it's a good thing. Uh, it certainly raised the issue of free speech for everybody. When he took over, you immediately had a reaction against him by people who want to uh, maintain content uh, um, moderation, which is really another word for censorship. And the very fact that all of a sudden people had arguments about what's going on on Twitter in terms of who is and who is not allowed to speak was on balance a good thing. I'm a little bit skept skeptical about how much things will change. I really hope that Musk acts on his uh, words. He did say he's a free speech absolutist, but no sooner that he, did he say that before he said, well, not much is going to change for a while. And of course, he's under tremendous pressure by the advertisers who themselves are incredibly censorious to maintain the existing regime. Yeah, I mean, a very unusual for a major social media company. It doesn't really make the sort of money as the Facebooks and uh, and others make, does it? But it's but it is still where political discourse happens. It is, and it's been absolutely crucial in terms, you know, some revolutions and uh, uh, and campaigning that's taken place, and has a huge impact on certainly uh, Western uh, governments and, and 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 in terms of the sharing of news. Um, of course, he says he's a free speech activist. He blocks a lot of people. I mean, he's I'm totally entitled to choose not to listen to anything I've said. But he blocked me for one perfectly reasonable question to him after he called a British, uh, one of his British Thai cave rescuers, a, a, a paedophile. And I thought it was OK if we call you a paedophile, which I thought was a reasonable question if he's defending free speech. Um, but, um, but he's got every right to do that. But the key thing is, it's not just advertisers. It'll also be countries like China, where there is mass routine censorship and which most social media companies, like including Facebook, give into all the time, where he makes his Tesla cars, largely. Um, and if he's going to be owner of Twitter and allowing all these people being as critical as we all are of China, the Chinese might decide to get quite difficult about that as well. So when money starts talking and his shareholders at Tesla and in those perhaps uh, in um, in Twitter start talking, he may change his views. Yes, Julia, I think you're right. The danger is, is that most large corporations, not just simply the big tech corporations, have really rolled over to woke ideology. Uh, they really are uh, on board with the idea that uh, people, certain kind of people, are not allowed to have their voice. Uh, they are very casual about shutting people down, blocking people uh, from having access to Twitter. And what I worry about is that when you add uh, together the nations like China, like Iran, and various other totalitarian or semi-totalitarian states having uh, so much influence over the, over the social media, plus in addition, the big American corporations, then the space for navigating uh, free speech ideals becomes very, very limited. And yeah. to me, uh, the, the future lies in having somehow getting the resources to create a platform that is much more uh, uh, robust about allowing people to, to have their voice. And well, well, that's it. But the answer has always been, well, go and set up your own social media network. But when you have you know, organisations like Facebook, like Twitter, which are so dominant in the the sort of the town square that is online, that is where we, you know, where we actually have our political and, and national international discourse now. Um, it's, it's easier said than done, isn't it? Their dominance of these companies. Surely it, it shouldn't be down to who happens to have spare cash from selling rockets and cars to, um, uh, you know, to buy a social media company, whether or not we get our free speech censored or not. Surely we need governments to do that. I and mean, I want, you know, the British government to make it clear, you can't operate in this country if you censor free speech. And it's not just about some horrible neo-Nazi organisation getting to have their say. You can have rules where if you are breaking a law in this country, like threatening to rape someone, doesn't seem to bother Twitter when they 
you know, trans activists threatened you know, rape against uh, J.K. Rowling, by the way. But if you threat, if you actually are tre- make, doing something that breaks the law in the country, fair enough. But but we've seen censorship of people stating perfectly scientifically and medically reputable views on things like COVID being uh, and 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 saying things like trans women aren't women; they're men biologically provable facts and losing their accounts. That cannot be acceptable in a free democracy. Well, it's not acceptable uh, to you and me and to a lot of people. And and it is the case that uh, there are now millions of people who feel that they have no real access to uh, the public square. Yeah. And that's a major problem. Unfortunately, uh, our government and other uh, governments in Europe are themselves quite complicit in maintaining the status quo. Yeah. I don't think the Tories are any better than Labour in this regard. They are extremely censorious in their behaviour. And therefore, it seems to me that come the election time, we need to somehow put pressure on MPs and try to get at least a small cohort of open-minded, flexible members of parliament ele- elected yeah. who will begin to make a bit of noise on yeah. this issue. And hopefully protect us, as we, as we didn't see during a lot of the last couple of years. Always good to talk to you, uh, F- uh, Professor Frank Ferradi. He's been a fan stalwart on, 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 so, on uh, freedom issues. Final, very quick word to Sam Armstrong. This is a concern for you? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I know that PayPal uh, took out action against yep. the Free Speech Union. And uh, th- there's a, a debate in Parliament this week for a new amendment that would allow... Uh, uh, that would ban the likes of PayPal from targeting uh, people. That's what we need. Speech. We need laws to protect us. There are government. They should protect us. Sam Armstrong, pleasure having you company all this morning. This is Talk Breakfast.